into the body of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has been found covered in bruises at a morgue in Russia's Arctic North. This an hour's drive from the prison where he was uh, suddenly declared dead on Friday, of course. The anti-corruption activist had been at an Arctic penal colony serving sentence on charges his supporters say were politically motivated. Peter Conradi is the uh, Sunday Times European editor, author of the book Who Lost Russia, and joins us now live from Paris. Good morning, Peter. Thank you so much indeed for this. Um, I was reading so much about this over the last three days and we were talking about it this morning. I mean, what do you say? Somebody in the briefing said, do you think, you know, Putin's responsible? Do you? I mean, uh, to, the, to, to all of us here, of course, but that's not going to change an awful lot, whether people complain and get arrested or Western governments jump up and down because Putin has an iron grip in Russia, right? He, he, he has indeed. Um... I mean, it, it was very clear from the beginning that there was something extraordinarily fishy about the, the Kremlin's account of what happened, because the, you know, the official version was that he collapsed um, at 2.17 local time on, on Friday afternoon. And, you know, the bizarre thing that was within about two minutes of uh, Navalny's so-called collapse, there was a press release that had been out and been issued by the local prison authorities Five or six minutes later, the Kremlin spokesman was talking about it. So, you know, extraordinarily fishy right from the beginning. And what we've seen in the couple or so days since is just how that story is beginning to unravel completely. Peter, for people who aren't familiar with Alexei Navalny, the work that he did, the sort of absolutely, I think it's fair to say, fi fearless, fearless. Uh, campaigning mm. and um, tireless effort to sort of bring, bring the truth to light, just... Tell us about the impact that his life and his career's had. Yeah, I mean, basically, Alexei Navalny appeared on the scene about a decade or so ago. Um, and that was when Putin, who'd sort of stepped aside from the presidency to be prime minister for, a, for four years, just to sort of get around the, the time limits that they had on, on serving consecutive terms, there were big protests. Navalny led those protests. They had tens of thousands, even more, people in uh, Moscow and other cities across Russia. He became a kind of a very popular figure then. He was really good at using the internet in terms of social media. He was sort of behind a whole number of exposés of the corruption that underpinned Putin or still underpins Putin's regime. We had kind of videos of uh, Putin's palace uh, down on the Black Sea, you know, clear signs of corruption um, of other members of Putin's entourage and so on. You know, he, he has been essentially a thorn in Putin's side for the past decade. And we, we sort of, things took a very dramatic turn in 2020 when he was campaigning against Putin. He was in Siberia, he was on a plane, he fell very, very ill very quickly. They managed to get him out of the country. He went to Germany, where he was treated for, for Novichok poisoning. And then came the crucial moment, which was at the beginning of 2021, he decided to go back to Russia to fight Putin from Russia itself. You know, not surprisingly, he was arrested, as he will have known, almost immediately he arrived back in Russia. He's been in the prison system ever since, more than three years, uh, of which almost a year has been spent in solitary confinement. Um, you know, he hadn't given up, despite being in this remote prison about 1,200 miles from Moscow. He was still smuggling out messages. He was getting video out, all this kind of stuff. And now, you know, tragically on Friday, it came to an end. Um, we've read a lot over the weekend, Peter, about the conditions of this, this jail. I mean, minus 28 degrees. And, 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 and the inference is that this was ordered by Putin, and, and we don't have any details on what that can be. We, we, I think we were reporting just then that the body has finally been found covered in bruises. Uh, I assume that, that Putin ordered this, and the timing was there are presidential elections on the way, but uh, I guess the rule in Russia is you don't disagree with the dictator. If you do, you, you meet a sticky end. Why did Alex Navalny go back to Russia, having been the victim of poison? Because that makes him a complete hero, doesn't it? It does, or, or a martyr, really, yeah. um, and someone who knew he was knew he was going to be a martyr. I think he was he was concerned that if he stayed abroad, um, which he could he could well have done, he could have been a rallying figure for the opposition abroad, but that he would have just you know faded from 
relevance. You know, with each month, with each year that would have passed, he would have become more and more detached from Russia. I mean, you could say that the same thing is true of a number of other Russian opposition figures, um, a very celebrated former oligarch turned political prisoner himself, Mikhail Khodorkovsky, who lives in London these days. You know, he was a big opposition figure, but just because he's not in Russia, you know, people don't in Russia aren't really aware of him anymore. So I think that was that was the, uh, the fate that Navalny wanted to avoid. But he knew, you know, he knew that he was going to be locked up. And I think he, he thought that he was in a, in a sort of a, a race almost with Putin to to survive Putin's regime and to somehow emerge from it after Putin died uh, as a sort of a hero, almost a kind of a Mandela-like figure. I mean, you could draw similarities perhaps with some of the Soviet era dissidents. I mean, I used to work in, in Moscow many, many years ago, and there was Andrei Sakharov, who was mm. the sort of Nobel Prize winning physicist who was jailed for years and years and years by the Soviet regime. But he then emerged at the time of Perestroika, Mikhail Gorbachev, as sort of the conscience of the nation. But, you know, these days, Russia is an even more brutal place, if one can say it, than it was back in Soviet times. Fascinating, Peter. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Yeah, Europe editor from the Sunday Times. Brilliant to speak to you, Peter. Thank you so much.